Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about OneDrive on Ubuntu. I made a video previously about doing this on Manjaro, as well as a blog post, and based on some of the feedback, turns out more people use OneDrive on Linux than I thought. So I had some questions about doing this on Ubuntu, and I figured I'd go ahead and make a video about it. I'll also be putting up a blog post on this same topic if you want to check that out as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So to get OneDrive installed for Ubuntu, we're actually going to be taking advantage of at least one open source project, possibly two, if you decide that you want to have the GUI interface installed as well. The first application that we're going to install is require no matter which way you go, whether you want the GUI or not. So right now we're on the GitHub page for this OneDrive client for Linux project. I'll have everything linked down below. And if I have the blog post up uh, shortly after this video, everything will be linked there too if you're interested. So you want to head over to this first GitHub repo. And they actually have quite a bit of documentation here. It's very robust for a small open source project. And I guess I shouldn't say small necessarily. It has over 7,000 stars. Got a lot of forks on it, so it's pretty active. You can see they've made updates to it in the last three weeks, so it's definitely not a, a old project or dead project by any means. They're still working on this, so that's great. So if we scroll down, we'll find some install instructions, and we also have usage instructions. And like I said, they have a lot of other documentation here too to help you out for your specific use case. But we're going to go ahead and go to the install documentation here. And I have this really nice chart that breaks down the install process for multiple different uh, Linux distributions. So you can see we've got Manjaro, which is what I already covered, Debian, Fedora, a bunch of others. So we'll scroll down to find Ubuntu. And we're actually running 22.04. And while 22.10 isn't listed on this particular chart, You'll see in a moment it is listed, and I believe it may be supported. I haven't tested it out myself. So if you're running 22.10 and you decide to try this project out, let us know down in the comments if it worked for you or if you ran into any problems. Now, this chart tells us that we don't want to install it from the official repository. So we have some separate instructions here, and we'll click on this link. And you can see this will also work for other variations, uh, such as Pop! OS, Linux Mint, etc. We're going to keep scrolling down here. We're going to find another chart that breaks down the different versions. And here's where you'll see that reference to the 22.10, and it has some instructions for that. Again, I haven't tried that, so I can't vouch for whether it works or not. But we're on 22.04, so we're going to click the link here for those instructions. And you'll see that we need to run a couple of commands in the terminal. So we'll go ahead and open up a terminal here. And we'll copy this first command. Paste that into our terminal and run it. And this is really just getting a key for the repo that we need to add since we're not using one of the standard built-in repos. We're having to add an additional one. And we need to get this key to make that successful. So I'll run that command and put in our password. And then the second command is going to actually add the repo. So we'll copy that one, paste it in. And next, we need to do an apt update. So let's go ahead and do that. that just a second. Already done. Looks like I got some other updates to be done, but we won't worry about that right now. And then our next command is going to be to actually install the OneDrive console client. So we'll copy this here. Paste that in, hit enter. Give that a moment to finish. All right, so that's done. So at this point, if you do not plan on installing the GUI client, then we'll keep going. But if you do plan on installing the GUI client, you may want to skip ahead in this video to installing that GUI client because the process that we're about to do right now where we link the OneDrive client to our OneDrive account 
is actually handled by the GUI client. So, uh, like I said, if you plan on using that, skip ahead to that part of the video where we're installing the GUI client. But for everyone else that just wants the console application, what you're going to do next is just simply type OneDrive, hit enter. We get this link here and it says authorize this app visiting. So what we're wanting to do is visit this website. When we visit this website, it's going to have us provide our credentials. This is a Microsoft uh, website, so we'll log in with our Microsoft account or whatever account you have tied to OneDrive. And then after you do that, it's going to send us to a blank page and we'll copy the address from the address bar and paste that back into the terminal. And that's how it links this OneDrive application to our actual account. Now you can either copy this and paste it into your browser or you can hold down control click it and it'll open up for you and then we'll go ahead and log in so we went to a blank page and we'll just copy this out of the address bar and then we'll go back to our terminal and paste that in we'll hit enter and then it will tell us that it has successfully authorized, which is great. So the next thing that we want to do is what's called a dry run. It just kind of tests syncing everything up to make sure that everything's connected properly. It can communicate with OneDrive. It can download the files, but it won't actually download anything just yet. But we'll test this out first, and we'll go back to the GitHub repo. Go back a few pages here and this usage documentation. This is where we find the instructions on how to do that. Here it is. This is the command that will run a run, do the dry run. Paste that in. It's OneDrive dash dash synchronize dash dash verbose dash dash dry dash run. Put that in and let that run. Make sure that everything's successful. And now we see that it says sync with OneDrive is complete. So at this point we're ready to actually sync the OneDrive, not just do the dry run. So if we scroll down on the documentation here, we can see that to perform a sync, we just run OneDrive with dash dash synchronize. See, it's downloading a test uh, text file that I had put in there. And then here it shows where on our Linux machine that this OneDrive repository or where it's syncing the files to exist at. So it's in our home folder in a folder called OneDrive. So if we go to home and then we go to OneDrive, we see a test folder and then we see that test text file that was synced from OneDrive. So now we'll go ahead and move on to installing the GUI application. So to install the GUI application, we're going to head over to another GitHub repo. And this one's called OneDrive GUI. You can see here, I have a screenshot. We get a pretty nice GUI. Uh, while it might not be exactly like what you're used to on Windows, it's, uh, it's a pretty nice interface that's fairly similar. Gives you some good information and feedback about what's happening. So to get this installed, it's actually an app image. So if we uh, scroll down and look at the install instructions, we'll see that for users on Ubuntu 22.04 and above, may need to install Fuse 2 with this command. And since we're on that version, we'll go ahead and run this first. It's that in. Install that. 
And now we need to download the latest app image from the release assets. We'll click on that. And we'll see there's two here, but the latest one is from October 11th. So we'll click that to download it. That just a second to download. Then we'll go back to our terminal and we'll go to our downloads directory. And we need to make this app image executable. And to do that, we type in chmod plus x and then the name of the file. So now that file is executable. But we should be able to go to our downloads directory and then run this. And we get a nice little setup wizard here. We'll click next. And that's another thing to note about this application. You must be running the latest or at least above a certain version of the OneDrive console application. And it does a check here and lets you know whether you have the right version or not. So if you didn't, it's going to tell you. But if you followed my directions for installing a console application, then you should be on the latest version anyways. We'll go ahead and click next. And we want to create a new OneDrive profile. Hit next. And we'll give it a name. And we'll click create new profile. Next. Click finish on that. Now, when we click this play button, we should be prompted to go to that website like we did in the console application. Play. Yep. And we get this pop up and we want to click on this link. We're going to log in again. And then we'll copy that from the address bar, go back to the app, paste that in, and then click login. That just a second. And login successful. Please start sync manually. Okay, and now we can hit this play button and that should start the sync. And there's our test.txt file. Now this uh, GUI application, it comes with some additional settings that you can easily get to while you could do these things than the, the actual console app too. It's just a little easier from within this GUI. So if we open up those settings, we can see that we can start it minimized. I think we have some more settings somewhere else. If we click on the little uh, person icon there, we see the profiles because you could have additional OneDrive accounts here. So you can set these based on each one of them if you wanted to. So you can set it to auto sync when it starts up. It's like you can change, you know, how often that it checks and the permissions that it gives to the file. Here's the dry run. You can exclude certain files if you wanted to. Selective sync. You only sync specific files and directories and some other options there. So it's a pretty nice application. Uh, quite robust, I think, for an open source project. Sadly, Microsoft hasn't created their own OneDrive client for Linux. I'm not sure why not. I mean, you have Teams on Linux and other applications, you would think that uh, they'd want to bring more Linux users to the OneDrive platform. And a lot of people are already on OneDrive because of a client or work, school, whatever. So we're not going to save those changes. One other thing that I'd like to bring up is about automatically syncing if you're using just the console application. So if I go back to the documentation, or the console app, there's the section about running OneDrive as a system service. And then we see OneDrive service running as a non-root user, which would be in our case, or Ubuntu and all these other uh, distros. Once they use systemd, if you use something like run it or something else, there's instructions here for initd and run it too. But we'll go ahead and click on this one for systemd. And we can see that uh, we wouldn't already have a service running because we didn't set that up. So we could just 
jump in right here and run the system CTL commands to enable the OneDrive service. Now, every time you restart your computer, you log in, it's automatically going to start syncing in the background. So that's a great feature if uh, you don't want to manually sync it from the console app. And if that's what you're doing, then you're going to need to run the OneDrive base dash dash synchronize command each time that you want to sync up with your OneDrive online repository. So that's it for this video. We've got OneDrive set up on Ubuntu. If you have any questions, you want to see some other type of video, let me know, let me know down in the comments below. I appreciate you checking out this video on my channel. And everybody have a great day. Thanks.